Uh, I'm Dennis Dolniak. I am the secretary to the Lions Hearing Program for District 35O, among many other titles. Tell me a little bit about where the idea for these clear see-through masks came from. Well, the ideas were actually the creativity of one of our fellow Lions, Dot Myers, who was, who was actually with the hearing program very actively for decades. And Lion Dot had seen the story on TV that was with Josie and with uh, Katie and, and called me and called Lion Wendy and said, what can we do? And from there, the idea generated itself into, we need to create these clear masks. Can we buy them? Do we have to make them ourselves? And then it was suggested we should provide the option of the face shield because that option may provide additional opportunities for people who have visual impairments or hearing impairments uh, of being able to read lips as well as see facial expressions. Tell me a little bit, when it comes to these face masks, um, how do you make them? Well, we happen to have a, a lion who Lion Dot had, had reached out to who was making face masks for other, for, uh, for the general people. And Lion Dot got Lion Liz involved into, we need to create one that has this open panel. And so Liz experimented through many variations and Liz had utilized the face shield, which provides the actual plastic for the mask itself. And by using this face shield, which also has an anti-fog capability, wow. we're able to cut four of these out of each shield. Well, that was all well and good when we were dealing with small numbers. Our numbers are no longer small. And so I reached out to looking for a company who can provide us the anti-fog plastic, which is so crucial. And I found a company in Wisconsin. And just yesterday, I ordered enough plastic to make 14,400 wow. face masks. Wow. Now, I don't know if we're going to make 14,400 face masks, but certainly COVID has created this need in our community. And I am I'm absolutely amazed at the amount of uh, people who are reaching out to us and asking for these things and telling us why. It's not just the deaf and hearing impaired. It is the schools. It is the hospices. It is the special ed that needs to have the ability so that their students can really connect with what's going on. And then... Oh, keep going. I got the university uh, connected as well, and I learned that they had actually ordered the clear shield, clear face mask uh, from the company that I was exploring early on, who couldn't deliver these and couldn't tell me when they can deliver them. And so I was actually stuck then with, we're going to have to create these. Well. That has now created more sweat equity and heartfelt operations by people who are now using their talents to make this happen. And I have a team of four seamstresses right now, uh, but I need to expand and I need to expand rapidly once I receive these plastic sheets from Wisconsin. 
me about um, the seamstresses. How do they actually make the mask? How long does it take? Um, and are they doing this just out of the goodness of their heart? I mean, who, who, who all are making these masks? Well, uh, Liz, Liz came up with the idea and Liz was doing it to cover her costs. Other ones are doing it strictly on a volunteer basis and not wanting to invoice us. And so um, we're willing to pay people to make the masks, but we certainly appreciate any volunteer spirit on that. We will provide the plastic that goes into the mask. The fabric is gonna be up to the sewer, but Liz has actually created the pattern for both the plastic and the mask itself. The elastic could actually be harvested from these face shields wow. and cut. And so we're actually utilizing more of the product, but the, the elastic had been in high demand and hard to get because of the uh, amount of people creating masks. However, now it's easier to get. And so we are using the elastic but we are finding that there are some people who wear hearing aids where this elastic tends to get stuck in the apparatus and can easily pull off the apparatus when they take their mask off and we don't want them to lose. And so we've had some requests for tie backs, which we have not yet started production because it takes so much longer. Uh, and material costs are going to change as well. So um, we do have templates. I will be meeting with a uh, group of volunteers next Wednesday in the villages. Wonderful. Because the villages has a huge contingent of, of elderly people who have hearing impairments. Mm -hmm. And there are elderly out there who are willing to volunteer to create these masks. And so I'm excited about doing that. Our uh, Lions Club out there in Lady Lake and Orange Blossom Gardens uh, is pulling together the meeting and we'll be coordinating with uh, another sewing circle, I hope. Uh, we have another person who is reaching out on the coast in, in a senior community. Uh, and so that will be one of the pushes because the response to our offer for this kind of service needs more support. And yesterday I got over 30 different requests wow. for over a hundred masks. Why do you think the demand is so high right now, Dennis? Um, why do these masks work so well and, and why do people need them? The need is certainly for the ability to read lips. COVID, and now with the requirement of communities to wear face masks to protect other people and themselves too uh, from the COVID virus has created this special need. And I don't see this need going away. And as schools start gearing up, the teachers are finding, oh, we're gonna have to now do this because we're gonna to need to wear masks in the classroom. And our kids need to be able to connect with us. And if they can't read lips, they're not gonna be able to connect. Uh, we have Head Start programs reaching out to us. We have the uh, early, early education groups. Uh, and the large school districts I'm trying to recommend that they go through the corporate approach of buying their own. Um, they're publicly funded. The Lions are a nonprofit organization working only with volunteers, nobody on our payroll, and dependent upon donations to make this work. And so although we don't charge for any of our services, that is strictly the lion's rule is that lions never charge for their services because of our nonprofit status. We do accept donations 
And so money would be accepted, but volunteerism even, is even more welcome. And that's where the sewers come in. How many of these um, masks and face shields do you think you've passed out so far? As of today, I have orders and will have sent out 618 in the first five weeks we've been doing this. That's a lot. Uh, the predominant piece is the face shield, uh, excuse me, the face mask. The face shield, it's, it's uh, probably about one out of every five is going to the face shield. And the face shields are good too for kids because they won't need to have the mask around their face. And we also don't need to create smaller versions for the smaller heads, which we are also getting a relatively sizable number of requests for. The families of hearing impaired people have youngins. I've had a request for a mask as young as four. And so this one here is intended for a six-year-old, and you can see the size differential. And so I've got, I've got Lion Liz working on the template to help create the smaller mask as well. What are some of the other services you're offering folks um, with disabilities during this pandemic? Because I know you do a lot of work with visually impaired folks as well. We do. We have a, a program called Project Right to Sight, which I am the first vice president for that organization. And Project Right to Sight still connects people who have need for eyeglasses, uh, who cannot afford eyeglasses, to be able to get those, uh, even during the pandemic, although it's been harder because some of the firms that, that have been providing the service haven't been open during COVID. We used to be providing a monthly eye clinic every, two, every Wednesday at the Orange Blossom Family Health Center. And I have now been working that clinic for a number of years where we will actually serve 20 to 30 unemployed, homeless people trying to get their lives back together through Salvation Army, drug-free living, uh, spouse abuse centers. Uh, we, we will actually do the clinic where we'll have an exam given by a licensed optometrist. We'll actually do a diabetic retinopathy screening, which has detected several major problems with their eyes that would have gone undetected if we had not seen them. And then that same day, we will actually send the script from the optometrist out to our warehouse in Ocoee, where we have more Lions volunteers pulling glasses from the over 80,000 pair of donated eyeglasses that have been cleaned, measured, bagged, and labeled, trying to match that up with our clients, and then put it on their face that afternoon. So in one day, these people would get served. But unfortunately, COVID has stopped that because the clinic is not open. We can't serve that community. The risk factor is too high. And, and we pray that uh, things will stabilize to where we can go there without that significant risk. So we've got that in, involved. If a person does need eye surgery, we do support the eye surgeries. And of course, these eye surgeries for people who, who don't have insurance, they can't afford them. And then we will connect them, thanks to the Florida Foundation for the Blind, of being able to provide that support with the Lions Club sponsoring them. And we'll connect them with, a, with an eye surgeon to do the various op surgeries. What sort of um, services do you hope are expanded um, over the next few months for folks with disabilities during this pandemic? Do you see a need and, and what do you think could fill it? Well, we, we didn't know this need existed two months ago. And so thanks to another uh, 
image that we saw on TV with Katie and Chelsea, uh, the need was there and we responded to that need. I'm not sure what's on the horizon, but certainly if it's related to sight or hearing, the lions are gonna be there to help them because that's our major focal point. When Helen Keller asked, to, asked us to be Knights of the Blind, Helen Keller became our inspiration. Josie's now my inspiration to make this happen. Tell me a little bit about some of the responses you've had from folks that have received these and just if people are watching this, what they can do to help if they want to get involved in a number of different ways. Well, we have had some great quotes from some people. Um, I've, I've got those from various folk, from Easter Seals, from um, the hospice center, who had a nurse who needed to have the, the face shield available. Um, but it's just an outpouring of appreciation that makes my heart go a flutter with, with just joy. Uh, and so if other people want to get involved, we'd love to get donations sent to us. We have a Facebook page uh, that's active out there. I have an email page that's active that I respond to. And so we can send them the form to request the mask or a face shield. Um, we can get them involved with maybe creating these if they have the skills for producing them through sewing. And uh, of course, monetary donations support this venture, uh, which currently is coming from donations we have in the hearing program. 